Uh, thank you very much uh, for to be here. That's uh, my third time in Budapest, and now uh, yeah, let's just stay a little bit longer. We have um, we are we are from the Zeiss Digital Innovation, and we have offices in Germany and in Hungary. Also, we have offices in Mischkols and in Budapest. And I was very often in Mischkols and Budapest. I you have to be more often yet in the next days because we opened this office in Mischkols uh, more than six years ago. And now in Budapest, it's some months ago, we opened the office. And so I have to become more often in Budapest. And um, yeah, why I start with this, uh, why we developed this QA navigation board, this quality assurance navigation board. We are uh, at Size Digital Innovation. We offer stable Scrum teams for the Size Group and other third party clients. And so we are not a product house, we're supporting the products, the product developing of uh, size and uh, yesterday Bela mentioned all about what we did, uh, what we do at size and um, so the team stays stable but the project starts very often anew and so we have to think about things like, as a, it's like as a new project starts and we have to think about a lot of things, quality uh, requirements, uh, demands of the, the shareholders, stakeholders and so on and um, so it's yeah, we start in a new uh, journey, a new adventure, and so we have this wide, also this great field of uh, things we have to discover. And so, um, one thing we have to discover is the quality assurance. And uh, long, long time ago, maybe as the younger will not know, there was this old-fashioned time for what waterfall and V-model projects and did, uh, cars driven and so on. And I was working as a test manager and a new project start and a new project starts, I have to write a test plan. 100, 300 pages, uh, written once, never read it again. Uh, yeah, also me, some uh, notice <laughs> and uh, uh, signed with blood and uh, only take out, uh, 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 the only was uh, open like the pandemonium when there was some troubles, yeah. But it describes all the necessary things we have to discover or we have to, uh, we have to think about when we start a project like environments, test data, resources, tools and so on. And um, so my idea was, yeah, let's think about uh, when a new project starts, let's think about these things, uh, all this stuff here. And uh, so my idea was, uh, let's go to, the, uh, to our project team and say, write 100, 200, 300 pages. And now you could imagine how the people look like. So, yeah, so it was not a good idea. And so, my idea, also, so our idea was to develop a playful, uh, light and simple tool to do this in a workshop together with the team in a more agile way. As it's like a tool set. That's why Cool Navigation Board as it's like a tool to, to uh, do, uh, yeah, to get the, also to, discuss the quality assurance with the whole team, with all members, with all stakeholders, shareholders. And this is the result. So, okay, this, also, let's start with the result. Uh, this is our uh, poster. We developed uh, before Corona, so we, the idea was to uh, bring this poster in the room and uh, have it uh, the whole day in the team room. And we could work uh, with this poster with Corona. Now it becomes a little bit difficult because we became distributed and so on. But the idea was to have a big picture to, uh, collect, also to collect all the things we need to know about quality assurance. And it's divided in two parts. One is the QA octant, and one is the uh, QA map. And I will start with the octant. And uh, the octant here defines what we do, uh, what we have to test, what's the risk, also what kind of test types we need. And it bases on the idea of uh, ISO 25010. Uh, you all have to know ISTQB, yeah. And the idea uh, the idea was first idea was yeah let's discuss also go down this big picture during a workshop and uh, yeah that but it's, we recognize it's not a good idea it's too much and so we changed this big picture here in um, in this octant with all the eight quality criteria and the first step in this workshop is to describe what does the quality criteria mean? And that's one big advantage of the QA navigation board, to speak about the same thing. Because with the help of this visualization, we are able to speak about the same thing. Because um, if you talk, also if you start a brainstorming with uh, the developers or the, the department members and, speak about, and start to speak about quality assurance or testing, the develop, developers say, yeah, yes, we do test. And they speak about unit testing. Yeah, and the department members say, yeah, testing is good. And they mean uh, user acceptance or other things. So you, some, very often you speak about one term, like testing, 
but you speak past each other. You, you mean it's a different thing. And that's why we start here to describe what does it mean, portability, maintainability, efficiency, and so on, and describe all the things. Yeah, it's only for the documentation because you already know this yeah, in details. And uh, so we create this octant, and it's uh, a small spider web here with all the eight quality criteria, and we, we start to discuss the prioritization. Uh, I know there are other ways like uh, uh, brisk storming to do this. The idea here is to define the risk, to know what we have to test, what test types we need, and so on. And I know if you ask uh, people what's important, if you're now you are a member of the department and say what's important, everything. Yeah, and so, yeah, so, 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 so I know this will be very emotional and very difficult to discuss, so we need a good moderator. And, uh, but it's, uh, it's a good thing to start. Also one of my colleagues uh, used this uh, octant for, to uh, discuss the, the, the uh, to start with a new architecture. It's uh, Hendrik Lösch, he's a SpecFlow member too, yeah? And he's used this uh, for, to, to discuss uh, the architecture of the software. And he defined a role. He said, yeah, now you have to, you're only allowed to place one of these quality criteria to the top position and two to the second level. And then the discussion starts. What's important, what's more important? And the, the, the result is interesting, but more, more important is the discussion. They are the, uh, in this workshop are the members of the team, the product owners, the members. And so you get, uh, you get aware of the requirements, the, the needs, the demands of the people and discuss what does this mean if you do security efficiency to the top level. That means a lot of budget, a lot of uh, programming, and maybe it's not a good idea. So the discussion starts and you use this like uh, to share yeah, here efficiency, security. It's really on the same level. What's more important and to discuss this. And afterwards, we know the test types we need. If security important, we need penetration tests, for example. It's a workshop with the product owner stakeholders. Uh, we define the quality criteria. Uh, we use the octant. We could do it in one workshop with the map, or we could do it separately. And um, we started with a poster, but with Corona, we used a PowerPoint. Also, we prepared a PowerPoint presentation to place it on, um, in Teams or in, in, in SharePoint to work together in the PowerPoint presentation, or we copied uh, this big picture and uh, place it into a mirror board and uh, do it in mirror board. Also, uh, you could do it remotely or in person, but I love to be in person, that's good. The last two years I was uh, doing talks and only to a black screen. It's cool to be here on stage with real life people, that's good. Yeah, so um, it's a workshop. Uh, poster, PowerPoint, one hour. And so now we know the, um, the, uh, the test types we need. And I already mentioned there are other ways to define the risk. Uh, if you know other way to define the risk, please use it. There's this tool called risk storming. It's this, with the same result. We, the most important thing is we need to know what kind of test types, what, what risk what we have to test, what are the prioritization of the different things. Okay. Also, you want to take a picture, so go shoot back, go back. Good. Um, now we go to the, uh, the map, and the map is, a, you could do it in one uh, workshop or you could uh, do, yeah, do it separately, but it's the same thing. We, in, the, in this workshop, the Scrum Master, the team, the PO, the stakeholders involved, maybe the ops colleagues uh, you could ask to join, and you need a good moderator because uh, you said so many, uh, it's, it could be emotional, but uh, you need a good moderator, start, to fill out, uh, to start with the octant. Yeah, now we know the quality criteria, the prioritization, we know the test types, and now we fill all this information into our uh, board and our QI map. And it's different, it's these columns. Also, uh, the idea here of the map is uh, I, used, uh, I, ask, uh, I asked Hendrik about to give me a small, as some years ago, a small uh, process, a picture of the process of for developers like, uh, yeah, there's all the requirements, then there's this coding and testing. I also could go back. There's the requirements, coding and testing. Then we store our things somewhere in GitHub or so in Git. Um, and then we do build automation, things, the pipelines, and there is a test environment. Yeah? And I, uh, my idea here was to use this small, uh, simple workshop, uh, simple workflow. Uh, and 
Let's fill it uh, together with all the members of the team. I know there are similar approaches like the one-page test plan, for example, but I take a look at the one-page test plan and I recognize it's very similar, it's close to the old test plan. And we recognize that it's a little bit, uh, this approach was a little bit uh, too much QA and the developers were saying, oh no, it's too much QA, it's testing. And so our idea was here to use this more uh, developing liking way uh, to, uh, yeah, so say uh, it's like a, yeah, a Trojan horse to uh, catch the developers. So, so, yeah, so let's recognize it's not about QA. Uh, we start where the RT, also we define where are the requirements, uh, also where the requirements come from, where are stored, is it possible to connect the uh, requirements with the test, test cases. Um, the next thing is this big coding and testing area, it's the test pyramid. I know, uh, I love the, uh, the agile quadrants of Lisa and Janet, uh, but I recognized um, in one workshop, it would be too difficult to explain it to all the participants. Uh, so I like the idea of the, the pyramid of Mr. Cohn. Uh, so uh, yeah, I use this one, it's, it's, it's a common and everybody knows it. Uh, but we have to explain it, what's unit test, what's service test, what's system test, also the separation. So we start to explain it and then we fill uh, the testing, our test types in it and we could mark it with things like, uh, does we have the right skills for penetration tests, for example. We have no penetration test on our team, so we need support. We could mark it with a spot or with some color and uh, to mark and say, yeah, it's a, uh, we need it, but uh, we need some skills, uh, coaching or trainings for us. The next thing is the repository. Why is the repository on this page? Because, um, yeah, for developer, there is no question about the repository because the unit tests are on the same repository as the testers. But there, if you do a manual tests, you have a, uh, other, uh, you have a different repository for your manual tests. One question to the audience, what's the most common and famous tool for manual testing, test management and departments? Excel, yes, exactly, Excel. And uh, so, and maybe here, and maybe to start the discussion, Excel is maybe not the best tool to do manual testing or to test management. And so, um, so, but you need to know you have uh, different uh, repositories and maybe some breaks in it. And so, so that's uh, part of the discussion too. And the next thing is test management. Uh, how do we do want to pl uh, plan our tests? And very, as very important is the documentation. I know. If you talk to some uh, agile ev evangelists and they say, we need no documentation. It's all defined in the Scrum process with the artifacts. But uh, we at SAIS, we, uh, uh, one of our business units, uh, it's at SAIS Meditech, and we uh, developed uh, medical devices. And who is involved? Who, who, who's, uh, who knows uh, who is in the medical device section? Or uh, who, yeah? You know, uh, you have to store the unit test, uh, unit test results 10 years or something like this. Also, if you want to bring a medical device into the market, you have to think about documentation. Also, you have to find to fulfill some compli compliance from the FDA or the EMA and so on. So, you could mention this one here in this uh, section with the test management. Next thing is test data. Anonymization, where does our test data come from? Does we need a um, test data generator? Uh, mocks, simulation, and so on. Uh, build, the build section is about our pipelines, tools, we need plugins for our automation, uh, does we want to do uh, things like sonar cubed, code analysis, and so on. And uh, the last column, that, and it's a big column because uh, one test environment is not enough. At least we need uh, uh, one test environment for, one te for the test type, uh, but uh, as a one, it's not enough. So, so and, and, at the end, you have uh, this big picture, and I was uh, asked to show some results here. And now the next, next the last p uh, page is about results. This one result we did long, long time before when it was possible to be face to face. Um, here we use this uh, stickers, this uh, this poster. You could get one of these posters. It's not a product result; it's a tool we are using in our daily business, and we want to share this idea because. <sighs> If you, uh, there's a lot of ideas or a lot of things uh, we uh, still needed in our process. So if you here in the audience have a good idea, I will see. You, uh, I will. Uh, I will. I'm going to see you next uh, next year here on stage. Yeah. So it's a lot of ideas. It's an idea. So to open your mind. As I say, a lot of ideas, a lot of possibilities, and things we all we need. We need. So and uh, this 
poster, uh, come to our booth. This poster, it's, um, you can get it on our booth. And um, we fill it with this funny stickers here, with this study stickers. And um, so here it's a small example. We fill here the, uh, the prioritization. Here uh, we fill down all the tools. We start to discuss it here. The colleagues want to do TDD, but they don't have the right skills and so they need a training, also they think about to do it. We have uh, uh, some here, uh, some, yeah, oh, we fill all these things. So no, this is a PowerPoint version. Um, I will jump to this one, this is good. Uh, we, are, we are using this uh, in our daily business. It's one of our part, um, uh, it's, in not, it's a proposal or it's a recommendation for our teams to do it. Uh, and our tombs uh, use it in our daily business. And I was asked by Zeiss SMT, it's the semiconductor section uh, of Zeiss, uh, they switched to um, Agile some years ago, and they asked me to support to enhance their quality uh, assurance processes. And so I did this with 30 teams, this workshops with 30 teams, and we get a lot of these pictures. And um, it's in German, but uh, it's, yeah, it's something that's in German. Uh, but we use this uh, to define the current state, like uh, to check what's, also the, uh, what's the current state. And here we have the requirements, we have the different tools, we define here uh, who's responsible for the tests, and uh, we used some colors like, um, it's funny here, to, to do, problem, or wish. Yeah, like, so you could use all the things during the workshop uh, of, uh, of, um, yeah, of Miroboard or PowerPoint, uh, create some tool changes here, to use different colors to define uh, the, the current state. And you could use this big, big picture um, as a start, uh, so yeah, that's a, to start to go more in details, maybe in the wiki space to define like all the necessary things like manuals to do, uh, to start with Git or to do the pull requests. And uh, you could use it all of the whole lifetime of your project in retrospective to mark down the issues you recognized in your retrospectives and so on. And so, and it's the big advantage, the big advantage, the pop up, yeah, still there. Um, I have two minutes left here. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, advantage is this big picture to speak, also to, to create this transparency. Uh, but the second thing I already mentioned is the discussion starts during these workshops. It's very important to start these discussions because it's, they started to, also, uh, with all the members in the team, they started to point the elephants. That, you know the elephants, as English saying here, the problems never, n nobody wants to speak about. Uh, so it's very often in these workshops I recognize the, the problems, some issues, some uh, details, some specialists who do uh, manual testing or unit testing don't want to share it with the people and say, oh, there is something left. And so we, uh, so we started to, uh, yeah, to explore these islands here, these knowledge islands. And so the discussion is more important than the big picture at the end. So. So that's one result. And um, yeah, I could, uh, also, yeah. But, and you could use this, uh, this, uh, this big picture or this big picture as a, like, like a doctor to check for some symptoms, some, like an anamnese, oh, that's an English anam yeah, anamnese, oh yeah. Also like to check what the current state. Uh, and so maybe you recognize some issues in, the, uh, in the, uh, the quality process of your team. If there are no manual, or if there's no auto, um, unit testing, you will see there's no unit testing. Yeah? So you, could, uh, you could, will recognize the secrets, or if they have to only automation, no manual testing, or here maybe they have a lot of, imp or a lot of context or a lot of impacts of, for the requirements. On, uh, for a team, it's good to have only one single point of input for the requirements. If you have a lot, it could be, some uh, the issues, or there could be uh, some uh, yeah, result in some trouble. And maybe if you have only one environment, I, I spoke about it, I mentioned it, it's not it's enough. So, so we recognize uh, some issues, maybe some, some points for optimization. Yeah, that's, this example is left. You could do it on your own if you take one, if you like. And what's the result? Um, it helps us to visual, it, it's helps us for the planning, it's helps us to check the current state of our project. Uh, it reference, it's the 
it's this, it's, yeah, it shows as a visualization of the current state, but we could use it for further improvement. Uh, we could use it to our, in our retrospectives. And uh, we could add uh, some um, other things, like uh, go, more, go more in details in the wiki space, uh, use risk storming, use one page test plan. Yep. And I wrote a blog article, uh, so if you like to, uh, so you could, it's uh, code here. I wrote some blog articles in English and German. You could read afterwards in front of your fireplace with a glass of wine or palinka. Yeah, good. Yeah, sit. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. And let's see. So far, we have one question. Based on your experience, how agile is the mentioned QA navigation board? Was there a problem where the client needed a new feature, so QA Octane changed? Based on how agile is the... The QA navigation board uh, is... Um, the, our approach was to bring all the people together to discuss it, not as in the former old uh, V model waterfall time. There was the test manager, I was a test manager, I was uh, do, running around, do some interviews and talk uh, to the people and get all the requests uh, for the quality assurance procedures and write it down in this big test plan. And nobody, nobody recognized this test plan because. Uh, the developers do their own stuff, the testers know how to do the testing, and uh, there was no uh, improvement by this document. And uh, it doesn't change anything. And uh, with the help of this quality uh, assurance navigation board, we want to, do, uh, to bring all the people together. Uh, so they, they do a, it's like uh, you use, use the board, the task board, if you change uh, your task or take a task and change it to a new state, you do, this, you, you do the commitment to, the, uh, to fulfill this task. And that's the same thing with the quality assurance part. One thing is to create a transparency, bring all people together, and uh, to, yeah, to get a commitment of all the participants in the workshop joined uh, to, do the, to enhance the quality, to work on the quality. And that's, in my, point, in my opinion, it's, a, it's an agile approach. Yep. Okay, I think that question is like almost exactly the same. Mm. Um, it, it, it's maybe the end. So, mm. was there a problem where the clients misunderstood the QA octane? Um, that's the clients misunderstood the. Um, also the um, where, is, where was was there a problem where the clients misunderstood? Yeah, well. The whole workshop needs a good moderator who explain uh, the, the way of the workshop and uh, all these necessary parts uh, like the f eight quality criteria. And that's one thing you I mentioned in the meetup uh, two days ago. And very often we speak about testing, we speak about quality, but and what's, what's, what's mentioned in your talk and in Alex's uh, talk too. Uh, nobody knows, also, there are so many de definitions for quality or this, uh, nobody knows these eight criteria for software. And so we have to explain it to the people so they know what does quality mean, what does, uh, what, what does it mean, uh, because the clients pay for functionality. Also I'm, I'm as a tester, 95% or more in our project is functionality. Yeah? So the client, also us usability, it's not so important or, also, does anyone use the German tool SAP? Yeah, also, so you, uh, so, yeah, like, and, um, and um, yeah, so uh, we, have to, also, we have to show them what does it mean to be, uh, uh, what is the reliability, maintainability, what does it mean, what does it cost, and we have to speak about it. And that's why we have to explain it, to have the same, to speak about the same thing, and to um, judge or to, to set the prioritization. And that's very important. That's why uh, we, we have to start to explain it and then we have to fill it. And very often, maybe we don't follow the standard because the standard, as it is, uh, um, when I wrote this, uh, this blog article uh, and uh, we sent this blog article in German to an English translator, so you want to change the whole phrases for the uh, definition of the, uh, the definition for reliability or maintainability because it's so. It's like a lawyer wrote down a sentence, so nobody will, <laughs> does understand. But uh, at the end, if you under, if the whole members and the, or the whole participants understand what 
reliability or maintainability means for you, it's enough. So uh, and so you have to define it together to uh, to, underst also to understand the same thing and to prioritize for you and understand what it means if you do a little bit more or less or do it more in one of these different eight criterias. <laughs>